This is the Elgato Wave DX. The latest microphone from Elgato, the Wave DX enters as an XLR alternative to the incredibly popular USB Wave 3 microphone. From a design standpoint, it's quite a departure from the other models in the Wave family, with a much sleeker and pointed profile. This altered silhouette certainly obscures less of the user's face than the more vertical Wave 3 did. The Wave 3 also required some extra purchases to get the most out of it, namely a pop filter. Luckily, the pop filter for the DX is built into the microphone system, making for a less fiddly setup, and of course there's no potential for accidentally breaking any plastic mounting brackets. And whilst Elgato says that the Wave DX has been designed from the ground up to give you the cleanest, most well-rounded voice possible straight out of the box, the DX does also require some extra purchases to use. Unlike the Wave 3's plug-and-play USB output, the DX is an analog microphone with an XLR input, and so relies on an audio interface to work properly. Any XLR preamp or audio interface will work, allowing you to use this microphone with professional cinema-level cameras and mixing desks. However, for the smoothest experience, Elgato obviously offers the Wave XLR. This obviously pairs with the Elgato Wavelink software, allowing you to mix up to eight audio sources through your laptop or PC for your live stream or content creation. All of the voiceover you've heard so far has been recorded on the Wave DX, but I do have an Elgato Wave 3 right here, so let's switch them out and see if you can hear the difference in the same setting and surroundings. And this is me in the exact same setup using the Elgato Wave 3, one of the most popular microphones for podcasters, YouTubers, streamers, and content creators. Now, of course, the Wave 3 comes with a lot of user-friendly features that the DX doesn't have. For example, it's a USB-C input as opposed to the XLR input of the DX. And also the Wave 3 has a built-in headphone jack output, just making it a more user-friendly device. If you're looking to just get started in content creation or podcasting, then the Wave 3 might still be that entry-level point for you. However, if you're looking for a more modern design and a more versatile microphone that can be used for more than just podcasting and streaming through your PC and laptop, then it could be worth checking out the Wave DX. The Elgato Wave DX is launching at just under $100, making it slightly cheaper than the Wave 3 currently is. Although, as I've said, it does require an extra purchase in the form of an audio interface to work. Currently, the Wave XLR that I referenced earlier will set you back $150, which is about the same price as the standalone Wave 3. I'm sure there will be plenty of bundle deals that will make pricing of the DX and Wave XLR more competitive, but for most users, the Wave 3 will remain the better choice for now. Of course, in some sense, it's unfair to compare these two. They're designed for different use cases and different users, but I'm genuinely intrigued. Could you hear the difference when I switched the two microphones out? Let me know which you thought sounded better down in the comments below. And while you're down there, remember to subscribe to Tech Radar here on YouTube so you don't miss any of our future videos.